Hi everybody, it's Kim from Fleece and Harmony and thank you for joining me on December 23rd, 2022. This is episode 111 of our Knitting and Crochet podcast and we're recording this podcast in the yarn shop in the woolen mill on the fleece on the fleece har farm <laughs> the sheep farm in belfast pei so welcome to everybody and if this is your first time joining us this is a podcast focusing mostly on knitting and crochet but we also talk about our farm and our sheep and our woolen mill as well so welcome to everybody it's hard to believe it's December 23rd already. It's been just, time has been flying by crazy, crazy fast. And um, as usual with the farm update, we're gonna start, start with the weather because it is extremely unusual weather. It is uh, been above freezing for the last four days and raining. And it is going to stay above freezing for the next uh, four or five days as well. So we are not going to have a white Christmas this year. That sometimes happens, but we really have only had a couple of cold days and the rest of the time it's just been uh, wet. It's mud season again. Usually in December, we're not worried about mud season around the farm, but that's happening now. And uh, it's a little bit, it's quite dark. So uh, of course it gets dark early. We're coming up to the, to the um, shortest day of the year, but uh, it is dark because it's been, uh, sorry, I've got a little piece of wool or something in my, my eye, sorry about that. Um, but it's quite dark in the shop. We, we don't have the best lighting in the shop, but we have lots of windows. So normally uh, we don't worry about it too much, but uh, the last week or so, it's kind of been dreary and raining almost every day. So there's pros and cons. The, con the cons are is that it's dark and a little bit depressing. The pros are that we are still watering the horses and everything with the hose, so we don't have to haul water anywhere, which is great. So we're thankful for that. Uh, in this uh, farm update, I should talk about what's happening in the house. I'm not going to take any pictures because there's not it's not really very interesting looking, but there's been good progress in the last two weeks. We have gyprock up in um, some of the rooms. So we had the original plaster walls in our house that um, we were going to try to save, but honestly, they had deteriorated to the point where it really didn't make sense to try to patch them and to save them. Um, all of the, it's the, when you have the lath and pr plaster, uh, they used to push the plaster through the gaps in the lath and create these little hooks that hook, keep the wall on the wall. Those are called keys and all of the keys in behind the walls were uh, were broken so that it meant that the the plaster was basically leaning up against the lath so it's not really even though it wasn't cracked everywhere it wouldn't have been sustainable and in, within the next few years we would have had to replace it all anyway so we did take the decision to take down all of the old plaster and yes there was horse hair in it so of course in, in the old days they made uh, plot mixed horsehair in with the plaster to give it strength and uh, that's what we have in the house and it is kind of a shame not to have plaster walls because they are lovely but uh, it just didn't make sense to leave the plaster there and then in you know a matter of time at some point we were they would have to come out anyway and then we'd be in a mess again so it's pretty um, lots of plaster dust in the uh, in the house but we have started to get gyprock uh, up in the rooms so that's uh, really helping and uh, of course if somebody has missed a couple of episodes we have our heat we've had our heat now for more than a month so that's good and um, it's so it's it's really uh, my mom is here, so it's uh, it's pretty comfortable, and we're Ken and I are sleeping in one of the rooms that is being renovated. So they put the gyp rock up in that room first. So we're our, it's where our bedroom will be when the house is finished. So we're getting uh, uh, used to the way it feels so sleeping in there, but it's just gyp, plain gyp rock walls with the you know you can see all the screws. None of the mud has been yeah, applied on the gyp rock yet. So it's a little bit rustic, 
but it's comfortable and perfectly fine and warm and everything so we're we're good with it so it has been a big um, help to our morale to actually see walls going in and that you can just now you can really start to picture how it's going to look, going to look when it's finished and uh, we're really really happy about that the sheep are all good and the horses are good we had to put uh, blankets on the horses we don't always blanket our horses even in the winter they have really heavy nice winter coats of their own but um, because of this raining weather and it can be a little bit sleety some days um, we're, we've been keeping the blankets on on them but uh, they're really anxious to be able to roll and have a good scratch because they're rolling with their blankets on so miles is a brand new blanket which is quickly looking like an old blanket because he's been uh, rolling in mud with it so <laughs> you can't keep anything nice and so i think that's about it for the farm we're just waiting for christmas uh we talk a little bit uh with betsy about uh, christmas there's not a lot of christmas decorating being done because we have no room to move anywhere in the house or in the shop we do have the outside of the house decorated but uh but that's about that's about it so uh, and i don't think we're we're not going to be able to have a tree uh this year because there is not a square inch to put a tree in the house with everything moved around but we will be uh, looking forward to next year when we will do everything up maybe double because <laughs> we, we missed it this year. Um, continuing the uh, tradi tradition of one episode that I started last episode, I want to show the next um, segment of the group of vignettes that the Campaign for Wool produced in Canada. And last time I showed Nonia and the knitters of Newfoundland that belong to that group. And uh, I was really, really delighted to see how pleased you guys were to le learn about Nonia. So this week we're going to uh, look at a segment that they did, the Campaign for Wool uh, produced. And in this case, it is the 100 Mile Blazer. So the wool was sourced within 100 miles. It was, um, most of the work was done in Toronto, I think. So Toronto is a pretty big city, but within 100 miles, I guess there were some sheep because they, they um, have wool that uh, was sourced locally within 100 miles. And they had to find somebody to weave the fabric. Uh, they had, had it designed and they made the, the blazer and it's a, it's a pretty cool project. So we're going to skip over there and take a look at what the campaign for wool was up to when they, uh, when they recorded this uh, segment. Can we, from start to finish, produce textiles within a given geographic zone? The supply chain for that kind of work, it used to exist here. It's to the detriment of the wider world that we've decided that everything should be shipped in from wherever's cheapest. In the 19th century, there was a, a connection and people had this sort of bond with things that they made in a way that today we're just so separated from the things that we consume. The first thing about wool is it's renewable. If you have a sweater and you decide you, or a blanket or whatever, and it gets worn, you can either mend it or you can felt it and make it into mittens. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. And if at the end of the day, you don't like whatever it is, you can put it in your compost pile and it'll go back to dirt. Wool has uh, characteristics that synthetics haven't really been able to reproduce. You know, it has that ability to absorb moisture and still make you feel cool or warm depending on the season. It's breathable and it's warm. It's somewhat fire retardant, which is interesting. It will actually self-extinguish in most cases. And it's just a really comfortable fiber for at least three seasons of the year. Canadian wool actually has incredible specific properties. And I think it's very important that we have access to our own supply.
When I first got sheep, I got Rambouillets, which is like a French Merino, so it's very, very fine wool. The problem was at the time in 1988, there were no mills in Canada, basically, that could handle the really fine fiber, and they just wrecked it. So I started to look at a way of getting a slightly longer staple and a slightly less fine, like a medium fine, um, fiber that some of the industrial mills in uh, Ontario could handle. And so that led me down the road of using three purebreds to basically develop traits that I was going to select for. I wanted to have a length so it was easy to spin. I wanted to have it fine so when I wore it against my skin it wasn't scratchy. The other thing too is for years and years colored sheep and colored goats for that matter were a no-no because everybody just wanted white and I wanted the natural color because I didn't want to do a lot of dyeing. So that led me down the natural color road and a lot of the um, sheep that I have now are anywhere from browns to grays to blacks, steel grays, um, even some beige sheep as well as the cream ones. It was in 2006 we built the building and then opened up the mill and basically pieced together the equipment. The fiber gets shorn off of an animal and then it's skirted, which is removing any areas that are, you know, urine stained or really heavy vegetation. And then it gets rinsed. We put it out on a mesh uh, rack overnight and let it dry to 10% moisture, which should feel cool but not wet to touch. Then we weigh it out and then it goes through a picker, which basically takes it from that lock formation into more of a candy floss looking type of fiber. Once you've finished spinning the fiber, then the next day we ply it. Once those bobbins are filled, then we take and skein it off into a skein, whatever yardage the customer's wanting. I started off as a student at OCAD and I was studying sculpture. Once I was finished OCAD, I realized there's nowhere to do that stuff. And I started thinking, okay, what am I interested in that has sort of a lower cost of entry, you know, you don't need like an entire metal shop or a foundry. And I decided to start doing dyeing. So I sort of specialize in custom natural dyed work. So a lot of what I do is at least referencing, if not recreating, historic textiles. Material comes in and I'll clean it is the first step. And once it's clean, you mix up your vat of dye, and that can vary widely depending on whether you're talking about a synthetic dye or a natural dye or what color. Once the vat is prepared, you usually simmer. So it's usually a hot process. You're usually cooking the fibers with the dye for some period of time, and then removing them, rinsing them, and drying them. The fact that you get to sort of deal with chemistry for fun and art's sake is something that I really enjoy. I think that's probably my favorite aspect of it. The thing that I specialize in as a weaver is working with locally sourced um, and processed fiber. I do a lot of um, yardage for garments, starting with a designer that I worked with in 2015 who was instrumental in introducing me to locally sourced fiber. So before we set up the loom, I have to get all of these threads organized and then it comes to the loom and it gets beamed on. Every thread has to be brought through the heddle and it has to be brought through in a pattern. So whatever your pattern is, you're, you're following a pattern. So the threads are coming through the reed and this is what gives you your threads per inch count. And then finally it gets tied on. And then after that, you're ready to start weaving. The 100 mile jacket was such an amazing project. It was a very cool project to be involved in and it was a really interesting one because it's the largest project that I've actually done. How can we create 
a, a beautiful, luxurious fabric using only resources within 100 miles of the city of Toronto. We know where their wool came from. We know where it was dyed, where it was spun. This was just such a great way to bring that to life. So I've woven it, but then it's like an honor for the likes of Smythe to put it into a garment that is so fashionable and that's at Holt Renfrew. It's a bit of a, you know, pinching myself that did this happen? This movement of farm to fashion came to life through this blazer, which is amazing and the end result is also beautiful. It's really showing the detractors who think that that the time for the wool industry has passed in Canada, that there is a place for Canadian wool and that there's a real demand. It's so important to protect these traditional ways of producing fabric. If there aren't people carrying forward these skills, we will lose them. We're too efficient these days. We make things too fast, too fast, too cheaply, nobody cares. Yes, be efficient and smart in how you do things, but things should take time and people should appreciate them. So that's the 100 mile blazer and there's two more segments to go so we'll keep uh we'll keep showing this because i think it's really interesting and uh, i'm actually learning a lot with each of the segments about things that i didn't know about were existed here in canada and uh, as well so i'm hoping that you're enjoying it and learning something as well we'll go to the shop update now um, this podcast is probably going to be a little bit shorter and uh, I'm not going to do a list of five um, and I don't have any whips or rips uh, this time. So we are going to just go to the shop update. Um, we'll do a recap of the Scandi Works uh, Cal and we'll just go right to the Harmony part after, uh, after Betsy uh, and I have our chat. So we'll do the shop update now and... Uh, the shop, the most exciting news of the whole year in the shop update is that we have our wool blankets from McCausland's. So we're so excited. Um, we had saved up fleece from our own flock of sheep. We had about a thousand pounds of wool that we uh, that we sent up to McCausland's and we had white wool and we had black wool as well. So McCausland's, um, when you have a certain amount of wool, they will make special batches of yarn from your wool and uh, they'll, they'll make blankets for you. So that's what we had done and we had plenty of wool to have that done. Um, and we did two different designs. We did two different sizes and two different designs. So there's the throw, which is um, it's like a half size blanket, I guess. I'll put the actual dimensions down in the uh, in the show in the titles below. And uh, we have queen size wool blankets. So those are the two sizes that we made. And we did two different designs. We did the checkerboard pattern, which is uh, this pattern that you can see here. This is actually um, the light green and gray. So the gray uh, would be made from uh, mixing our black wool with the, uh, with the white wool to come up with a gray color. And then the, uh, the green is dyed, obviously. So this is called green checkerboard. And I don't know what colors we're gonna have left by the time you see this because the newsletter people have been uh, notified of the blankets being in stock um, last Friday. So they've been buying for a week. So uh, you'll have to check the website on, on uh, what colors we have. Um, so this is the, like I said, the checkerboard pattern. We have our nice little label that we had especially done and it just says fleece and harmony and 100% um, wool blankets spun by McCausland's. 
So that's checkerboard. And I have pictures of all of the colors on the website so you can see everything. And, um, oh, I just found my card. So the throw size is uh, 52 inches by 76 inches. And the queen size is 76 inches by 104 inches. So that's the size of the, the blankets the throw and the queen. And then this pattern is called their tweed pattern. So when you see the colors, um, you'll see all the different, uh, the different colors. And um, the, all the tweed blankets have these three white natural stripes at the top of the blanket. And again, they have the Fleece and Harmony label. And we have all the colors in tweed as well. So the colors are the same in the um, queen or the throw. We had both sizes, so we had the, they were the same colors available in both of the different patterns. And um, anyway, you can see this. And this, this color, it's kind of like this beautiful purpley maroon. So this is, anybody's wondering what the maroon looks like. It's not like a, like a reddy burgundy. It's more like a purpley burgundy. And it's act actually really gorgeous in the checkerboard as well. So we see that. So I um, don't want to say this, but I can't, well, I do want to say it because I'm going to say it. I, and I don't, I don't really know. I've, I've had a, a McCausland's blanket or I felt them before. Uh, the ones that are done with just the, uh, they, what they do at McCausland's is they take the clip that they get from farmers and they mix it all together and uh, then they produce blankets uh, out of that mix of wool. So there's no particular breed and they just, it's kind of like the run of the run of the mill. Not, well, not in a negative, <laughs> in a negative way. I, maybe that's where the saying run of the mill comes from, but they, uh, they take all of the, all of the wool that they get and they mix it all together so that they end up with a, con a consistent type of wool because they're mixing um, wools from roughly the same the same group of uh, people all the time um, but people have said that this these blankets are slightly softer they're still ru rustic wool blankets but they're slightly softer because we have sheep that we we bred for wool to, for softness for our hand knitting wool so I can't really say if I can feel a, much of a, a difference, but people have been saying that they are, uh, as far as wool blankets go, that they, they are uh, a bit softer than, um, than the other blankets that they felt. So if you're interested in that, um, they're selling really quickly. They always sell out when we have them. So uh, you want, want to probably jump over to the, the online shop and, and see what's left when you're, when you're seeing this. We do have a couple of books in, new books in the shop as well. I'm just going to grab them here. Dee Hardwick, who um, was one of the Rowan designers and is now, um, she's not designing for Rowan anymore, but she's very well known for people that have uh, followed and knit with uh, Rowan yarns and but she's you know a fantastic designer in her own right and she has a new book that's published by Lina um, Publishing and it's called The Knitted Fabric and we have that book in stock. Um, it's uh, I won't have time to do a slideshow on this but uh, it had she's Dee is really uh, good at doing things for indoors like things for your home, textiles like cushions and things like that, as well as designing garments. So you have a selection of both in this new book. So if you want it, if you were waiting for this to come out, we do have it in stock right now. So The Knitted Fabric by D. Hardwick. And the other book that we just received last week is 52 Weeks of Easy Knits. So continuing with the 52 Weeks series, so now they have 52 Weeks of Sock, which a lot of people already have, 52 weeks of scarves and shawls. It's the same book. One is the shawl book is the hardcover version and 52 weeks of scarves is the soft cover, cover version, but exactly the same book inside. And now there's 52 weeks of easy knits. 
So if you've been uh, wondering where you can purchase this, we do have them in stock as well. So you can uh, pick that up in our, in our shop. And we have finally, we've been waiting literally months to be back in stock of Knit Like a Norwegian and we do have our copies back in stock of this book. It's been really, really popular. There's beautiful designs in here by all your favorite Nordic uh, knitters. So Arne and Carlos have a design in here as well, and uh, a lot of really famous uh, Nordic designers. So it's, it's a really good, it's one of our best-selling books, and we were out of stock for quite a while, but we did get it back. So if you were looking for that book, we have it. Um, I also am showing a picture right now of the Sea Knit uh, shito Shitake, Shirotake um, needles, which Shirotake just means bamboo, so there's the bamboo needles. Uh, these are the Kinky Emma Berry Sea Knit needles, the interchangeable set. I had the small set in stock and uh, we sold out of them twice. So now I have also brought in um, the larger size that goes up to five millimeters. So just check on the website. You'll be able to see um, that, that I have two different sets of those interchangeable needles and uh, those uh, are on the website uh, to purchase. I don't have any left here to show you. So that's why I'm just doing a picture on the side. Also, we um, brought in the Knitter's Pride Carbons double pointed needles. And we brought those into the shop because they have very small sizes, starting from one millimeter up to, um, well, they have all the sizes going up from one millimeter. As you know, I'm carrying mostly Chiagu needles, but the Chiagu double pointed needles only go down to two millimeters. So for knitting the Selbu mittens and those other fine um, mittens that were uh, featured for Nordic knitting mostly, uh, you needed to have smaller sizes. So I've brought in the smallest sizes that you can get and that goes from one millimeter uh, up to 1.75 millimeter in the carbon. So I have those back in stock as well. So if you um, need those, I have them. And finally, the other thing that I've been waiting to get back in stock, which they literally sold in five minutes, is these beautiful Bohin uh, measuring tapes uh, with this floral motif. I'm showing a picture because I don't have them uh, in the shop right now, but I will have them uh, like within, they've, they've shipped them. So I'm just waiting for them to come in. Uh, like I said, they, I, I, it's not a joke. They literally sold out in five minutes. So I have, uh, have these in. So if you want to see the different motifs, you can see them on the website. They're just really, really beautiful measuring tapes. So I'm really happy to have those back in, in stock. So that's about it for the shop update. Um, like I said, I'm not going to be doing the, li the list of five this time. And I think that we will just go over for the chat with Betsy. Betsy has a big announcement because she's finished something very special. So let's go uh, check out the segment that we did with Betsy. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Kim. I said it deep again. Mm. Last, time, <laughs> last time it was like really high. Yeah, whatever. The high was high. The Hi. High was How high. are you? Good. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, it's well, almost I, Christmas. I, and this is it. Yeah. Look, my sweater this is all, that's about the Christmassy thing I have. It's not actually a Christmas sweater, but I have no Christmas tree, which is one of my favorite things. But I have to say now we're, we're saying, well, we didn't want to cut down another tree. That's what they said Fiona. the day after I went out and chopped down a beautiful tree. <laughs> <laughs> Only I justified it by we purchased it from a Christmas tree farm. Okay. So those folks have specifically grown them for this purpose. Yeah. And it's their livelihood. That's right. So I was trying to support local. Yeah. We usually right? go to our wood, wood lot and get one. <laughs> yes. But the truth is it was nothing to do with that. Like I would have, I love my Christmas tree, yeah. my real Christmas tree, but there is not a square inch in any space that I inhabit in my life today, there's not a square inch to do anything, including the shop, which we'll tell you about later. Yeah. Why? You can't even move in here. <laughs> and my house is just now such a mess that, but I'll have given details about that in the, in the introduction. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. no Christmas tree. That's so, okay. 
Yeah, it's right. okay. You'll one year. One year of it, and then next year, everything will be pretty and that's right. perfect. That's, and that's, all, that, that's yeah. all that's keeping me going there we right go. at this point. Good, good. <sighs> so uh, there's not only no Christmas tree, but no knitting either. Oh. So I have, I have been knitting, but um, my mom is here, you know. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So to get in the Christmas spirit, though, we, my mom really wanted to go to church, to church on Sunday, yeah. which was um, yesterday because we're recording this on Monday. Right. You'll see it on Friday, but <laughs> tomorrow. Hope you know the tomorrow, days of the week. <laughs> yes, tomorrow I have a, a big, um, exciting policy, agricultural policy meeting. Oh. So I have to leave at 8.30 okay. in the morning, and I was pretty sure that I wasn't going to be in the right frame of mind to do a podcast when I got back. I'll be curious to hear about that, though, what that is and what takes place there. Yes, I think it's, uh, I, I don't want to say because I'm sure. not sure. I haven't, yeah. re I haven't re read the debrief that I have to Oops. read before I get there tomorrow at 8.30. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so we're recording a day early. So yesterday was Sunday. Yeah. And... We've talked about our little country church before, yeah. and Betsy goes to, and her family goes to that church now too, yeah. and my mom really loves it there. So we went, um, and it was the little kitties. They said it's not a concert. No, it was it no. was just a service, a celebration. A celebration. And, yeah. and um, for people that uh, have been following us for a long, long like since we started, we, we Jennifer and I had talked about the the church, yeah. but it's a church that was built, I think, like um, 1812 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's 200 and some odd years yeah. old. I think yeah. it was finished in 1812, and in fact, if you read um, some history of the area, they actually um, built the shingle mill to make shingles okay. and did the wood and it was the first permanent building that they built i think in the community wow. yeah okay. and it was finished by uh everybody landed here in 1803 yep and i think it was um i think they had like a temporary building they had to get some houses yes, like for people because <laughs> winter rolls in yeah <laughs> and when they landed on the shores it was woods right to the shoreline yeah. so they had to do everything but i think i think it was in like commission and, and mm -hmm. everything by 1812 or something like that and it looks exactly the same I think it's it's really beautiful inside it's still yeah. all like the thin planks like up the wall up the ceiling yeah, the whole theme is wood so there's yeah. the main sanctuary that's all wood and has yeah. I think like I'm assuming some of the original pews even in there I don't know. Uh, or maybe I'm not, not. Sure, that's but so true because they have a cushioned seat so they well they have a cushion the on the seat though yeah so, I, so the anyway. cushion, their cushions are just applied on top of the seat. So okay, it could, so be, the could be the original. Yeah. The original, yeah. And um, up until like well, when we had moved here, I think they still had the original windows. Oh, so wow. now they've redone they've the windows. They've redone the windows, yes. Because it's yeah. costing them a fortune to, for, heat it, to heat it. For sure. Well, but, they did some major renovations, I know, as well, in um, not too long ago, because they put an addition on out yeah, the back. That's so right. They, have, uh, it's, they just extended it, so they have some more rooms Community and space, space, really. Yeah. 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 But the inside, the sanctuary and the church, it has a balcony, yeah. and um, it's really, really lovely. There's and some sta whole stained glass at the front. Yes. Yeah, so they had yeah. to back like that stained glass, because that used to be an outside wall oh of course so right. when they did the addition okay. they actually preserved the stained glass and then they installed lights in Back behind it so yeah. that we still have a beautiful stained glass window yeah and um it's uh and i was telling you that they were they were doing services in gaelic there yes. up until 1910 or 12 yeah. i think so yeah which is yeah. Amazing. So yeah. it is, yeah, it's really nice. And Do you they, know, are there still some Gaelic speakers here on the island? Not that you would know for sure. So Cape Breton still has a lot of Gaelic speakers. Okay. Not their first language. No, but, but just that Well, they maybe still it's their the first language. language. Okay. <laughs> so, so they know that, it, plus there's um, a Gaelic college in, in Cape Breton. Okay. So they teach, still teach well. Gaelic there. Okay. And, and there now, are people that preserve it. You'll have to teach me. Gaelic is... From Scotland, Scotland, but there's also Irish, Irish Gaelic, Gaelic as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they're and they're slightly different. Okay, maybe probably Irish Gaelic speakers and Scottish might say they're really, really different. different yeah. but I'm not aware, I'm not quite sure what the d yeah. differences are. Okay, but um, I used to go every summer and take Gaelic lessons at the Gaelic College. Good for you. Yeah. So that, do you have any up here no. still? Oh. <laughs> a couple words. Okay. Something I don't know. I'm it's, not really yeah, <laughs> it's it's a unique language in the sense that it's not one of sort of the 
what do they call them, the Roman languages, right? right? So it's just, a, it has a different The spellings sense, are right? all different. Yeah, and I'm German background, so for me it seems quite yeah. different. But, yes, yeah. and the, like the letters are pronounced, the letters look the same, like the shape of the letter is the same, right. but they have different phonetics oh, then oh, so yeah. it get, okay. gets very you can't you have to um to start out speaking it it's really they recommend actually like songs and things like that because oh. you're not then you're not concentrating on trying to read it you're, because you're, if you're sense. reading it then you're bound to get mixed up right as an anglophone right. reading it Makes because sense. the letters combinations of the letters don't uh, they're not phonetically the same okay. as what they would be in English. Right. Anyway, so that's it. But I think, and there's probably, yes, there are Gaelic speakers here on PEI, yes. but um, it's not as prominent as, say, in Cape Breton. Like, you okay. can find Gaelic spoken quite often in Cape Breton, actually. Interesting. Yeah, they're preserving I it. I need to get over there. Yeah. I need to get yeah. over there. Yeah. I do. They, they're actively trying to preserve it, so yeah. that's it. Anyway, the, it was fantastic. Beautifully decorated inside, and the little kids. It started the the first group was three and four year olds. They're so cute. Yeah, yeah. They so were twisting cute. for joy yes. because Jesus was born on Christmas Day. It was right. oh, they were so sweet. <laughs> yeah, they were you, really good. If you need to smile, just watch a couple of three and four year olds dancing. Yes. While trying to follow directions from someone down front yeah so oh yeah. it was so cute that's right it was really and nice. of course all dressed in their their little christmas finery too. yes so. they were really cute yeah. really cute so that was fun and my, my mom was delighted yeah she did say she said it could be worth moving over here to just to be able to go <laughs> okay i didn't i didn't tell ken that oh. we'd we'd, <laughs> we'd take her she's a sweetheart her and shannon yeah. shannon is her little wheat and terry not yeah well, so i say little but not crazy no little. she's overweight oh. <laughs> overweight wheat she's and terrier. sweet though yeah, yeah she comes in and visits in the mornings right now and she's been bringing are they what are they officially called the cookies she's been bringing. Oh, my mother. Oh, yeah. oat cakes. Oat cakes. Yeah, that's a, mm. that's a very Scottishy thing. So good. Yeah. yeah. So baking is being done and yeah. things. So yeah. So, so working was... out great for Kim. She's out here in the shop and the baking yeah. is still happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we should talk about some knitting. The big announcement. Oh, yay. Guess what? Betsy finished. I finished my wallflowers. So we will take a picture, a photo. I haven't yet. Um, I got you, some runaway yarn. Yeah. I haven't yet because we've been having not very Christmassy weather. No. It's been dreary and rainy and gray. Dark. So I want to take the photo outside if I can. So I'm hoping in the next few days we'll get some good lighting. If not, I'll just take a photo so you folks can all see yeah. it in full. All right. It's fantastic. So I am really, really delighted to the point where I was like, Another one, another one. Maybe not a wallflower, but like just another crocheted blanket. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it is a fun project. It really, really yeah. is. All right. So we'll kind of hold it up a little bit as best we can. You've seen most of, of it. We'll do the photo. Okay. What's important and interesting right now, I think, is the edging. That's right. what's, what's new. So you end up with all these little um, zigzags. zigzags, and you have to straighten that out. So she has you build it up so that you fill in the valleys and the peaks you can see. <laughs> to end up being even. It's hard because it's light. Yeah. So you fill in all those little valleys and peaks with different types of stitches and she walks you through that. And then you get to do um, the final sort of the last, I think the last two are sort of straight crocheting around. Okay. By then you've created a straight line. Right. So you get to do like a whole row of just... Um, Single double crochet, or double crochet and, yeah. depending on your vernacular. Right. Um, and then you edge it. Now, because this is me, <laughs> and apparently I have problems following rules, I chose not to do the final finish. So she has you do, I believe it's called a pico. Yeah, a pico, pico edge, edge yeah. on it. But I chose to do a reverse puff stitch instead. Mm -hmm. I tried the pico, and I just, it leaves a little. Um, like a little zigzaggy, yeah. lacy. I want to say nub, but that doesn't sound attractive. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's nicer than that. But I wanted like straight. Yeah, straight. So I did 
that on mine. And right. I'm and quite you learned happy this stitch, you said, doing Sitzel's uh, sweater. Yeah, Sitzel okay. Louis Vick's Sun and Set Stall. She has you trim the cuffs and the bottom and the neck with that puff oh, okay. stitch. It looks a little different on her sweaters because the yarn you're using is a much finer right. yarn. Right. Um, so, and it leaves, you, you do every other one so that mm -hmm. it leaves a little breathing yes. room in there. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah I, really I beautiful. really like, and it's so warm. If you have not had a wool blanket on you in comparison to an acrylic, because I have an acrylic crocheted afghan that I okay. would use down in like my main sitting area right. a lot. There is a significant difference. Yeah. It's a beautiful afghan and I have no problem with the fact that it's done in acrylic yarn, but just warmth factor, yes. wool is where it's at if you want yeah. warmth. Without being sweaty. No, not at all. Yeah, no. like it's it's no. temperature regulating yeah. kind of, yes. So have you... Although I can tell you the sweater right now is not temperature regulating. <laughs> It's a Sorry. little too warm in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm really pleased with my color selection. I'm pleased with the amount of texture on it. Um, I was doubtful about how that edge would get straight at yeah. some point, but it, it happens. Yes. And your vision that you had when you started, it turned out so. it turned out exactly yeah. like what you planned. Or I said I'm all done, but I'm still going to go and do some research because I was going with the, the lily pond theme. Um, to maybe try and find some sort of 2D crocheted dragonfly or frog to put on oh, one of my of course lily pads. You are. We're, we're gonna see. Yeah, we'll see if I can find something. <laughs> cool. So yeah, cool, cool. Very, very nice. Thank you. And um, I'm only gonna show mine for reference oh. <laughs> because there's not been one stitch made on in two weeks. But in case you were wondering, if it's your first time here, this is mine. Yeah. Which we started at the same time. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's it. I have dedicated, I, and I can, because I'm not actually like running the business. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, time. and if for people that want to know, every end is also already I thought so, in. and then I just found one there. You did? Which we won't know. Oh, okay. I didn't see that. I tried, but I'm, yeah. that happens with me, especially with this. There are, even though I crocheted my ends mostly in as I went, the final round that you attach it, I chose not to because I just wanted to secure it a little right. better to do like a full with the like needle. Like a real, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Um, so anyway, I saw one there. That it's beautiful. Missed. Thank you. It's beautiful, Thank congratulations. <laughs> and um, I'll call you for encouragement when I, I am, yeah. I'm, I'm actually really anxious to get to still, it, there, it's to a really done. fun project. It really is. It's not being done yeah. because it's not, uh, because it's not, like it's not in the naughty corner or no. anything. It's just uh, with my, the chaos in my house and everything. It's but not the project. No, it's not the, the, it's the circumstances. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm I'm actually sorry that I'm not working on it more. Like it's kind of like I said, maybe t maybe tonight I'll be able to work on it. Oh no. Maybe tonight I'll be able to work on it. <laughs> You'll get there. And then You'll three, there. two weeks have disappeared. I can't believe it. Yeah. So. so, And I would like, there were moments where I actually did feel a little overwhelmed by the amount. But as soon as I would get into it and kind of mm. get the flow going, it would, then suddenly I would get, I would want to do it and keep doing it and keep doing yeah. it. So to the point yeah, where I actually really had to stop at one point because I was getting like, a, I call not. it my crochet knot. Oh, in the in back, of, the back of well, it's mm -hmm. kind of like down in my my shoulder. I think it's from just the same arm doing right. It. Yeah. Well, the repetitive motion yeah. all the time. There's a lot of stitches There's in there. There's a lot of stitches in there. <laughs> and yeah. you had a little bit of yarn left over. I I did. I ended up with um, a color of the green and a color of the light pink. I did also shift some of my colors at one point, so mm -hmm. it may have been, the pink wouldn't have been a reflection of that but the greens I messed around with where the placement is some of my greens oh, okay yeah yeah and she does even say I think right in her when she has you purchase the yarn there is definitely one color that she says you could buy this many but like you'll be cutting it close so if you want to just get the extra one so you have it in the same right. dye lot not right. a bad idea yeah so that I think I just got the full suggested amount right um, rather than worrying about running out yes yeah, yeah. Great. So, so now we're yeah. going to talk about your mittens. My mittens? Oh, don't, so. I should show. I have one more that's oh. actually like oh, almost finished. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I've decided to attack my projects in a focused way at the moment. 
your multiple non-monogamous monogamous knitting has become monogamous now. yes so i've what, decided to do that because well it. i was getting close enough to the ends of some things that i wanted to finish right. it so my cake wrap is basically completed i am still going to do i like kim's suggestion to put fringe on the end oh the ends so are all I'm sewn in do, on this too yeah, wow yeah. you've been very efficient i don't mind sewing in ends i don't and either. i can do that sitting in front of the tv really easily yeah so that's not a big either. deal for me yeah, yeah. Um, the only thing I'm finding with this, so the construction I did, just to remind you, was the diagonal construction. So you start in a corner, you end up with like a, an L shape, and then you do the rest, mm -hmm. and then you, you come back to close that corner. And I found it's not a perfect straight end. So I have not washed and blocked this. Okay. So that may help things adjust out. But I'm also wondering, because by the end, it got quite weighty. Oh, maybe just on stretched. There, so it may have stretched. So the blocking may put that back yeah. in. Because that, I think, is the starting end. And that one's not as bad. No. But this one. Oh, yeah. I think maybe you just stretched. I think I just need to, to give it a good block yeah. and get everything shifted yeah. into position. And is this the perfect length that you want it? Uh, yeah. You yeah. I just on? kept trying it on and trying it on. I went longer than I initially thought I would need to because what I measured off of was a much finer fabric. Right. So when wrapped, wrapped around my neck, it hung right. longer, where mm -hmm. this took up more volume it's in poofier, the wrap. Yeah. there. Yeah. So I did go a little longer. So it hangs to about here. Right. I won't put it, I'll wear it next week actually on. I won't yeah. do that this week. So I'm gonna try and put some fringe Print. on, and I'm gonna do that in the um, Ferris wheel. Right, okay, cool. With that. And then several of you gave great suggestions on what to try to get rid of having like a, a wrong side. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do them because I wasn't going to, like I want it consistent. Right, <laughs> I right. wasn't going to go back on this one, yeah. but I will implement those ideas on a next mm -hmm. project. And one of the uh, ones that I found most intriguing is a seed stitch on the joint, like when you do the transition, right? Right, which I yes. thought I had tried that, but maybe not. So yeah, again, okay, I will try all right. the suggestions in the yeah. future and see what we can do. I don't yeah. mind it. It's just a little striping on the back. Right. So what I'm talking about is the pearl bumps. Yeah, this even though it is pearl because it's garter and seed stitch, you can see that extra little line of white there in the blue. And it's not on the front side. And it doesn't appear on the front side. So that's the two yeah. in contrast there. Yeah, but by the time I wrap yeah. it all around my neck and stuff anyway, yeah. Yeah. no one's going to nice. notice. And so in the end, how much yarn I did you... I used uh, two and a half of the Ferris wheel. So that's what, four, eight... Of the co cotton candy? Or cotton candy. Yes, so the blue. So that's 400, 800. That's 1,000. It's 1,000 yeah. yards of yeah. the blue. Okay. And it's in a, our sock weight, and I did it on a five millimeter uh, needle. Right. So it does have quite a bit of... Drapey, air, yeah. drapey to it, which yeah. I'm loving, really yes. loving. And in the uh, Ferris, the wheel, Ferris wheel, the, I the used kid. half of the first ball, and I will use the other half of it to do the fringe. Ah, okay. So just so one. one. Okay. Yeah, so 400 yards. And don't yards? write meters. It's yards. Yards. Yeah. Don't write. She's not writing the pattern. <laughs> She's creating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just have to do diagonal, seed stitch, seed yeah. stitch on. Make it as wide as you want. Yep. Seed stitch for the blue or the, yep. the main color and, and garter, that for, garter for the contrasting. You can do color. it. Yes. You really can. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Those yep. two lines. That's the pattern. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's beautiful. And Thank it feels you. very quish, squishy, squishy and, and nice. airy. And yeah. yeah. I'm quite excited. We keep our house quite cold um, because I don't know why. I'd, I'd rather spend my money on yarn for warmth. <laughs> Thank then you. Oil. I think you have your priorities straight. Thank you. So I will wear this indoors. I wouldn't recommend six degrees Celsius though. No. That's what, Is that, what that, you that was the lowest it got six degrees Celsius one no. night. We but. have to keep the pipes from freezing. Yeah. <laughs> Should be let's be reasonable. <laughs> anyway, we were no. you know, now people are like and mom likes it at twenty two. So yeah, see that would be too hot for me yeah. to wear wool inside, I yes, think. Yes. So, yeah. But uh we uh we we have our you know, if there was a badge for whatever the lowest, it was six degrees six Celsius degrees. one night. And that was when things got we were a little yeah. testy that night. So I've done winter camping okay. like on purpose and by choice right. in a tent when it's snowing in February. Right. But you like 
dress and prepare for that and you do maybe two <laughs> yeah. nights of it yeah if you're me if you're yeah. hardcore you might do longer and you do it because you love your husband and he wanted to try this <laughs> so you do it once with your 18 month old daughter who oh. loved it oh. by the way wow. but basically slept like we had special sleeping bags and right. i would not want to do that in my you house you didn't have to get down into your underwear at no. that temperature yes and it's take all. like a shower or something yeah no. get a, it's taking the shower is not the problem it's, it's getting out, out. <laughs> yeah it's getting out of the shower anyway, you dry quickly <laughs> yeah yeah so it was uh yeah that was something so but don't worry we have lots of heat now yeah. And um, some of the vents still aren't hooked up. So there's cold oh, okay. spots in the room, but luckily, or in the house, but in where they haven't yet been uh, hooked up is where we have our wood stove. So oh. Ken's actually been lighting the wood stove and oh. it just seems to even to out everything because we also don't want to burn more than what we have to for propane because the warm air is all going yeah. into where the cold spots are. So anyway, for, it's very comfortable. So, so for those of you who are in an area where there's natural gas, be grateful. Yeah. <laughs> our adventure coming out here in the winter has been just learning how to heat our home efficiently. And right. there are there are heat pumps and there's lots yeah. of things, I'm sure. You don't have yeah. to tell us all the, yeah. the ways to do it. But yeah, um, yeah. but it's different than... It's a, it's a real thing. Like yeah. to, I mean, it, for people that move here, I don't know that they do it anymore or not, but um, when they would be calculating your uh, application for more uh, mortgage okay. applications and stuff, the heating costs are factored into that. Okay. So it's not the and it's not the case in a lot of the, some no. of the other they no. don't talk about. But you have to actually um, say like what you're heating or you used to. I don't know if you still do or not. I, they but. didn't for us when we bought ours, so maybe yeah. we don't have to. Anymore. Maybe you don't have but to. But it might also be circumstantial too. Yeah. Depending on. Anyway, it yeah. used to be because I remember when we bought our first. Um, our first house, well, it wasn't a house, it was a condo. Um, they had, uh, while we were applying, it was, well, how is it heated? Um, what are the estimated heating costs per month? And Whether stuff it's like, required or not, I'm good asking. Idea. Yeah. For my next house I buy, yeah. I'm asking. So, yeah. anyway. Yeah. We'll figure it out, and it's a great excuse to wear wool. Yes, wool, exactly. Wool and lots of wool. Yeah. So that is basically done. The knitting part is done. Right. Now, these little guys, oops, that was just a DPN hitting the floor. It's all good. So last week, <laughs> many of you saw the jog. <laughs> when I was editing, I was like, oh, I didn't even look at the other side. They, the, we had the good side facing us. us. Or, yeah. The good side. Well, the good, yeah. you know. No, the, the, I mean. the jogless side. The jogless side. Where the join is. Yeah. So there was the suggestions to read Patty Lyon's book. Um, suggestions to watch Kim's tutorial so I took all of those to heart and I did that and they are great suggestions as foreknowledge <laughs> <laughs> and to know that when you go into your project and you start it right. so again in the future I will take those into account and I will just make it easier for myself from the beginning no. I am being stubborn and I don't want to rip these back right um, so we sat down with Kim here and figured out how to fix it for now, just rigging it with the ends that are there. Yeah. yeah. It may be not, maybe it might so not we be. So didn't, we yeah. didn't do this. We did the white stripe. The white stripe. So I, yeah. you can probably see clearly where it's not done. And hopefully you can't really tell too much where the white stripe is. And I do still need to tie in the last bit. So mm -hmm. that will even just jig it a bit more. Yeah. So what I did when we did that is I took uh, the navy, I took the na the navy end that she start where she started, and I just put it through the white stitch below, and I just tightened it. Which is basically what Patty Lines' um, advice is, but you would just do it when you when were you're knitting. knitting. You'd yeah. knit up, you'd, you'd, you'd lift up from below. Yes, from below. Yeah. So um, and it worked pretty well. Yeah. So there's just a little bit of a, jo a jog still on the bottom, yeah. but she's. Uh, Betsy, uh, <laughs> Betsy, forgetting my name, it's all good. <laughs> where, who are, where am I? Um, Betsy uh, just kind of played a little bit yeah. before we started recording, and she can do the same thing on the bottom. So. And the truth yeah. is, at this point, it's for you folks because my husband doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> They're going to so, be up inside his cuff anyway, yeah. right? Of his coat. So as he's not too worried, but I want to be a responsible knitter, right? And learn to do things better yeah. as well. There's always an so, opportunity to, to learn. learn a new skill. Yeah, yeah. So that's Great. again, I haven't done anything on these, but I wanted to address the jog. And again, thank you for the right. suggestions. And I will definitely start with helical knitting mm -hmm. next time. Yeah. That that will just be much easier yes. to know off right off the beginning. Plus, it's kind of cool to say you're doing helical knitting. Helical knitting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds very, very advanced. Yes. So okay. that's, that's all so I've that's got. It. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, so in case people haven't figured it out already, I think we've talked about it before. We record this part first before I go back and record <laughs> the parts that I do by myself. So I always say, I think this is going to be a shorter episode. Every, every week and last week I said I think this is going to be a shorter episode and it was the longest episode ever yeah yeah so it'll be what it is yeah so I don't know if it's going to be a long or short episode but yeah I either. do want to say one more thing she may have talked about the blankets that like fleece and harmony blankets at this point or right. that might be coming no in the I, shop I've update. talked about it you talked about it I talked awesome. about it so I got one okay because when I started watching this podcast back back way on back they had the blankets and I didn't watch I wasn't watching it as it was coming out so I was like what do they call that binge watching yeah. to catch up so I heard about these blankets but by that time they were long gone yes, yes. but I've had this idea stored in my head and I didn't realize that they were gone so even when we arrived on the island I came to the shop and I was like do you have any blankets I believe it was Ken I ran into that day and I was yeah. like do you have any blankets and he's like no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you and where yeah. have you been? <laughs> so this time, I will totally admit, I snagged mine before any of you had she any the first one. them. But yes. we have, we, we, plenty more. yeah, we have, I, yeah. well, I have to already told the whole story. Nice. So yes, we still so have blankets. Mine is on my bed. I'm using it every mm -hmm. night. I sandwich it between my sheet and my, my quilt. And yeah. it is so cozy. I can't yeah. like... The, the warmth is different. It's just mm. this warm, cozy warmth. So yeah. I'll, maybe this is too it's much information. It's cocooning. Like cocooning. cocooning. Yeah. Yes, it's really. So I'm at that stage of life where sometimes nights can be really up and down in temperature. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm enjoying the regulation factor right. of the wool. Right. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm happy you're enjoying it. I am. Yeah. So I guess it's time to say goodbye. So we'll say Merry Christmas to all of you. Yes, Merry Christmas, everybody. I guess, and a Happy oh, New well, Year. Well, I don't have to say Merry Christmas now because yeah. I'm going to go back. But you can I say Merry, yes. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yes. Okay. Bye, Betsy. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So I hope it shows up really like it that looks in real life because that wallflowers blanket is absolutely stunning. She just did a beautiful job and it's really, really, really a beautiful project. And it is a big project, but like we talked about, it is, it's really fun to do. And I don't know if it's because it's in pieces, um, obviously from my blanket, you can see you can go at your own pace, but uh, it's really, really stunning. It's a showstopper for sure when it's, uh, when it's finished. And I, we really, really did laugh so hard when we found out about the jog on the mittens because, uh, I mean, I did the tutorial on helical knitting, but I never even noticed the jog in the last episode and you, where people have pointed out when I was doing the editing, I was like, oh my goodness. Okay, there's a jog there that I didn't even see because we always had the, fa the side facing us that didn't have the, have the jog. So that was kind of funny. The next thing we're going to talk about, we're just going to do like a quick update on the Scandi Works Cal. So that's still going. I have a Ravelry group. But like I said, there's two feeds in that uh, Ravelry group in our community page. One is for big plans. So what you're planning on uh, knitting for the Scandi Work Kristen Drysdale Cal. And uh, there's already some finished objects in there as well. Uh, Betsy is, didn't show her, uh, swatch, uh, today because she's gonna, she's going to start, uh, that project for in earnest over the, the Christmas holidays and I'm going to cast on over Christmas as well. So by the next episode in January, we'll be able to show you the beginning of our 
our entries into the Scandi Works Cal. So I hope um, some other people will join us uh, casting on over Christmas. Uh, the Nordic Knitting Primer is the book where I'm, I'm going to do the Maya sweater, which is out of the Nordic Knitting Primer book that Kristen wrote. And uh, there's lots of really beautiful patterns there, but Kristen has more than 100 patterns on Ravelry. So for sure, you can, if you want to join us, you'll be able to find something beautiful to make from that selection. And that's about it. I think that's it for today. Um, we're taking a couple days off in the shop. So we are off tomorrow. We, you're watching this on the 23rd of December. We're off on Christmas Eve and we will be coming back to work in the shop on the 3rd of January. So we'll have a nice little break to relax and I'll be able to spend some really quality, lovely time with my mom and uh, with friends. So I hope that uh, you all have a wonderful holiday as well. I know that sometimes uh, the holidays are tough for people. So my wish for you, if you're not, uh, you're not celebrating over the, the holidays, is that you are able to find some peace and joy in even small things in, uh, in your life during this time. And we will go to the harmony part. I don't know what it is, but uh, as always, it's something relaxing and peaceful. And I'm wishing you joy with all of your crafting projects. And we'll see you in two weeks. Bye. you in the night.